a few days ago, a few media outlets reported that the Biden administration was potentially mulling a ban on the venerable gas stove. Now, this situation was met with a flurry of anger, denials, appreciation, and of course, some memes. I think this one's one of my favorites from this situation. And although I'm going to be talking about the particular situation in the United States, this situation is actually occurring throughout the world, especially in Australia, the United Kingdom, and in parts of Europe as well, should they ban gas stoves for health and safety in the environment? Because at this moment, I think it's only been politicians or talking heads discussing the situation and not appliance techs. So let's talk about all the different things today. The spark of outrage on this started with a quote from Richard Trumpka Jr. Gas stoves were a hidden hazard. Any option is on the table. Products that cannot be made safe can be banned. Now, this again was met with a ton of outrage from different politicians and pundits. And then the Biden administration quickly backtracked on the alleged or possible or proposed ban, saying that absolutely not. Gas stoves were not in the process of being banned in the United States. And even Richard Trumka's boss said that absolutely not, the CPSC was not banning gas stoves, and they may not even have the authority to ban the gas stoves in the first place. Now, in this video, please just don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what I'm reading here about gas stoves and providing an opinion. My opinion is whether gas stoves should be banned or not, that if the government really wanted to talk about dealing with deadly gas, they'd go to the source, Taco Bell. Now, why would governments decide to consider banning gas stoves? Well, the reason that is often given about gas stoves is that they are a safety hazard, especially when it deals with childhood asthma. Recent studies bear this out, including a study done by UCLA in 2020 that was commissioned by the Sierra Club that found out that 90% of homes in the United States had elevated or hazardous levels of nitrogen dioxide after the gas stoves were operated even under proper circumstances for an hour. Another study by the think tank RMI showed that homes that had gas stoves had anywhere from a 50% higher level to a 400% higher level of nitrogen dioxide compared to homes that simply had a standard or any type of electric stove. Other pollutants when you cook with a gas stove include carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, or even formaldehyde. These concentrated levels of harmful pollutants can cause cancer and other various ailments. And the one that's probably the most linked to the harmful effects that is often quoted by the politicians seeking to discuss or even ban gas appliances is childhood asthma. And for full disclosure, my daughter does have childhood asthma and suffers from it and has suffered from it her whole life. So I'm very particularly sensitive to this issue. Now, the question is, do I have a gas stove in my house? Well, the truth is it's none of your business, but if it was, I lost my gas stove in a tragic boating accident just a few weeks ago. So if you are with the ATF or FBI, I don't have one. Or do I? Now, in defense of possibly banning or restricting gas stoves, the catch with gas stoves, they are entirely unregulated in the marketplace currently when it comes to emission levels, or probably more importantly, venting. When you deal with other gas appliances like a gas furnace or a gas heater, there are very specific restrictions made on those appliances with the flue gas and other pollutants that could damage your health, especially we talk about carbon monoxide a lot, it, that it has to be properly vented from your house. But there are no regulations typically involved with say vent hoods that are used on gas stoves. They are not required to vent outside to take these pollutants and send them outside to the atmosphere. Most people will run a $100 Amazon special with a vent hood that just traps grease in the hood itself instead of taking those pollutants outside. That could be some sort of compromise that could be given to new building codes. Another consideration with health and safety is, of course, climate change. Natural gas is, of course, a major pollutant. It contains a lot of methane that causes global warming, as per what scientists say. Publications like the New York Times and Popular Mechanics have recently cited a study by ACS Publications. They did a scientific study on gas stoves, and they found out that three quarters of the methane emissions that come from a gas stove actually come from when it's not running, it's off, 
and the pipes are leaking, resulting in a lot of greenhouse gases being vented into the atmosphere. And this, of course, is a problem to people that believe and are very concerned about climate change. Now, in defense of gas, the lobbying group Taco Bell, I mean, the AGA, the American Gas Association, was and is very unhappy with all of these reports attacking the nature and method of these studies. They stated that in the case of the ACS publication, they only surveyed 53 homes that they bought off air and B&B to test the gas emissions from stoves that run and then not run, which caused the methane emissions. And additionally, the CEO of the AGA, Karen Harbert, told popular mechanics that natural gas distribution systems, where most of the climate change problems happen, has reduced greenhouse emissions by 69% since 1990, stating that the industry is working to solve climate concerns of environmentalists and the problems they have with fossil fuels, also citing that about $30 billion has been spent upgrading the infrastructure, hopefully reducing the climate impact of natural gas and gas stoves and other gas appliances. Now, with all of this being said, are they going to ban the gas stove? Yes, I think they're going to ban gas stoves, and in some municipalities, they've already done this. Now, I don't think the Biden administration is going to ban gas stoves or any gas appliances. They've said as much, and whether you like the Biden administration or not, I think there's been too much pushback from people and politicians to ever have this happen at the federal level, probably within this decade. But I think at some point in the future, at the federal level, that may happen. And beyond the federal level, we've seen smaller municipalities already take actions to limit or restrict gas appliances. Cities such as Berkeley, California, San Francisco, California, and New York City have all taken measures to ban or restrict gas appliances. For example, the way they are tackling this is simply by banning the possibility of a new home or commercial building using natural gas as a source of energy so you can't pipe for any sort of natural gas appliance. This mirrors overseas acts, for example, in the United Kingdom, where they are banning new installs on gas appliances starting in 2025. So in some places, even though that there are bans taking place, you do have a little bit of time to get a new gas install if you wish to. Now, beyond restricting gas infrastructure, California is actually in the process of banning gas furnaces and any type of gas heater system, as well as hot water heaters from being sold in the state. Gas stoves are not on the table to be banned in California. However, according to this article by Fatherly, when the rule passed to ban the gas furnaces and heaters, a directive was initiated that began drafting rules to include the banning of gas stoves, but that is going to be a potential future vote in 2025. The reason that the California Air Resource Board, or CARB, decided to make these bans is citing air pollution as the entire reasoning for it. Now, with these possible bans being in place, it's going to lead to a lot of work for appliance, plumbing, electrical, and HVAC technicians. There's a lot of work in the future for us in the industry. And these businesses have a tall task ahead of them to be able to have enough staff and operational hours to meet the needs of all these shifts. And if you are a technician or employer in any of these fields, I highly suggest you look into Field Pulse. Field Pulse can handle scheduling, dispatching, estimates, invoices, and even customers on your phone, tablet, or computer. There's more work than ever in the repair and maintenance field, and every minute counts. If you can have one piece of equipment that can handle all these different things and be used by techs in the field, dispatchers in the office and customers at their home, it means that there's less paperwork and overhead and more pay and hours worked for your business. How much money is it going to cost your customer to run a new breaker, outlet, or wire to an electric stove? Well, Field Pulse's estimate tools will make that easy to show your customers and help you close the sale quick. Now, how much money is it going to cost you as a consumer to run a electric line for your stove that you're going to have to be mandated to change over to? Well, we'll get to that in just a few minutes in the video. And it's not just the state of California that's looking at banning gas appliances. Kathy Hochul, the recently elected governor of New York, is looking to end the sale and use of gas appliances in her state. In her state of the speech, which was given on Tuesday, January the 10th, there were some fine details in that speech. The alleged details claim that gas installations are going to end statewide by 2030 for both residential and commercial builds. So that is another state 
taking action to ban the addition of new gas appliances, and I would look for other states to follow suit as well. Now, my personal opinion is that these restrictions and bans are going to become more and more widespread over the next decade or two. I don't think it's something you need to worry about today in most states, but over time they will become larger and larger with more states hopping on the no gas train. Now, when it comes to gas stoves, we actually saw the same exact thing take place 20 years ago, starting in the same state, California. The state was the first to start restricting high capacity, or should I say high water usage washing machines. And over time, other states began to enact very similar legislation to the state of California, restricting high water usage washing machines. This all culminated in 2012 when the Obama administration enacted legislation reducing the amount of water and electricity that washing machines could use, which essentially ended the era of high water usage appliances, like my favorite machine, the direct drive, which those as well as Speed Queen washing machines were promptly killed. Now, even with all these proposals being made, I won't worry about the ATF coming into your house, breaking in, shooting your dog, and then taking your gas stove away. The reality is that even with these restrictions potentially taking place, you're still going to be able to go out and buy a gas stove today, run it for probably a decade or two, and then have it break before you have to consider going and purchasing a nice pre ban gas stove on the marketplace. But let's say a wholesale ban does take place. What's going to happen to your pre ban stove? What are the options that you're going to have when that transition takes place? First off, I would argue that the availability of parts for gas stoves is going to last and exist for a very long time. Even right now in 2023, you can go out and purchase components for most gas stoves 20, 30, or even 40 years ago, and they're rather easy to find and fix. Even when it comes to those high capacity washing machines that I mentioned from say Whirlpool on a direct drive or a Maytag dependable care, you can usually find any part that you need, even though those machines haven't been available on the market in the case of the direct drive for over 10 years and on the case of a Maytag dependable care for 20 years or more. However, where there are concerns on the replacement parts are going to be the type of gas stove that's electronically complex that is going to have multiple or a single control board that is made in a very small batch for boutique appliances like say GE or Frigidaire or Thermador gas stoves. If the board is not very common and it goes bad on your stove, that will make it very difficult to find and replace in the far flung future. However, if it's an electromechanical piece like an igniter or a spark module, those should be rather easy to find way into the future. So if someone's watching this video 10 years down the road, I would try to invest in something less complex instead of more complex. And I say this because this is the exact situation we do deal with regarding old washing machines. You can find the gear case, the cams, the splutch, the seals, any of those things are very easy to find. But when it comes to the washing machine timer for those old school appliances, we're finding it harder and harder to obtain those, much less a control board, which may be non-standard and equally as difficult to find in the future. Probably the biggest problem or annoyance with the possibility of banning gas stoves is the fact that every home I've been in either is designed for gas or electric and almost never both. Electric stoves require 240 volt, 50 amp service, at least in our American homes, whereas a gas stove uses 120 volt up to 20 amp connection. And these connections and outlets are vastly different from each other as the standard electric stove requires a lot more energy to use. And in America, 40% of homes have gas stoves and I would presume to believe that a very small fraction of those 40% of homes would have a 240 volt electrical outlet, so they will not be able to simply swap stoves out. According to Angie.com, the cost to install a new 50 amp 240 volt breaker, as well as the electrical line, essentially for a new stove is running about $700. At current market prices, that means that the cost to simply transition from gas to electric will cost as much money as the electric stove does itself. So there will be a very large financial burden placed on consumers seeking to change from gas to electric. Now, in their defense, the California lawmakers have already stated that there are initiatives that are available through either tax credits or rebates to help pay for the installation of a new electrical line when transitioning from gas to electric. But will that be in every single proposal? I don't know. 
Will every single person be able to claim the tax credits? I, I'm not sure. The second order of effects that come by telling people they have to change from gas to electric is simply the nature of cooking. Anybody that has used a gas or propane stove knows that they operate radically differently than an electric stove. They simply don't heat up in the same style or way, and there are certain styles of cooking that you simply cannot achieve with any electric stove of any model or style. And the main area where I would be concerned as a technician is the situation of reliability. The reliability of electric stoves versus gas stoves is very dissimilar, and it's that way with gas furnaces, gas water heaters versus electric. Gas appliances last a lot longer than electrical appliances do on average. In general, a gas appliance is going to last between 5 and 10 years more than the same style of electric unit. Generally, an electric stove is cheaper than a gas stove, but the lifespan is reduced, making the electric stove quite a bit more expensive. And the reason that this is the case is you're dealing with much lower voltages like we talked about earlier. A gas stove is only running 10 to 20 amps at maximum when everything is in operation, whereas an electric stove will use considerably more electricity regardless if it is a glass top, a coil top, or an induction range. Now, entities like Consumer Reports absolutely rave about electric stoves, always classifying them as being better in operation for heating and cooking and, of course, energy efficiency. According to Consumer Reports, the number of gas stoves that are rated excellent is significantly lower than that of electric stoves, even though the prices are particularly the same. Now, in the comment feed, I'm curious how many people prefer electric cooking over gas cooking. I'm just curious. Now, full, full disclosure, I may have a glass top stove at my house that we may potentially enjoy, but I've also used a lot of propane. And of course, my daughters think I'm always full of gas. So there's also the important distinction about energy efficiency. And this is where it gets really dicey with gas stoves. And it's definitely one of the situations of why environmentalists are so concerned about natural gas cooking. The reality is that only about 40% of the thermal energy when you light up that gas stove gets transferred to the pan to actually cook with. 60% is eliminated by the flames going elsewhere. Comparatively, when you turn on an electric stove, 70% of the energy used gets transferred to that pan to cook your food with. And that's just for a glass top stove. If you move over to an induction stove, that 70% efficiency increases to a whopping 90% plus making them way more energy efficient. Now, the offset there is that natural gas is actually quite cheaper to use in most homes and households throughout the United States and Europe. So even though you have a higher percentage of efficiency, the gas is typically cheaper to utilize, meaning that you may actually save money by using gas over electric currently, but moving over from a glass top to an induction, you may save money that way especially if your electricity is super expensive in a place like, say, California, where you're spending 30 cents a kilowatt. Now, in Ohio, you're not going to save that much money by switching because our electric is running about 14 cents per kilowatt hour currently, and the uh, gas rate is very cheap. Of course, again, my daughters think my gas rate's very high. Finally, to insert my opinion in this, I think the core argument is that most environmentalists want you to use an induction stove which is extremely energy efficient and much safer to use than anything that on the gas side of the appliances. But there is a huge problem with induction stoves, and that's the fact that they are not cheap if they are built properly. Low-end induction stoves are garbage. If you look at the cheap models, which run right now about $1,000 US, they are very problematic to work on from an appliance technician standpoint. They have anywhere from three to four to five electronic control boards on them that are very expensive to replace. For example, a Frigidaire power board, and there are two power generation boards on a standard $1,000 Frigidaire induction range. They cost about $300 each to repair, and I'm hearing technicians cite them as being very flawed and frequent to break. This means that consumers are going to shoulder a very large burden on the cost of the stove as well as the cost of replacing the stove. And my personal opinion is that things are not very environmentally friendly if you're having to fix them a lot. If you're going from an appliance that lasts 15 years to an appliance that may last seven, you're doubling the environmental impact of junk appliances. And the other side of this is simply spend more money 
on a very nice induction range, which will last a lot longer, but is going to cost two or three times as much to the consumer. And if you're not able to afford a induction stove, your choices tend to be a little bit dicey because the low end coil top stove has been changed in the past three or four years to where they now have integrated thermostats with them. The reason these thermostats were added to coil top stoves was to prevent them from overheating, causing grease fires, which are a huge problem in American households. The side effect though of the coil top stoves being regulated is that you can no longer boil a pot of water without a lid on. You have to use a lid on your cookware to make sure water boils. And this is a problem that many people complain about on new coil top stoves. In the middle, of course, you have glass top stoves, which I think are a bit more efficient and you can run and boil water without the lid on, but they are additionally more expensive. And some people do not like glass top stoves due to the fact that the glass can shatter. Now, personally, I've never had a problem with that, but it is a concern on the second order of effects when countries are going to transition from gas stoves to fully electric. And again, the push is going to be entirely for induction, not glass tops or coil tops at the lower end of the market. So there will be a large economic burden shouldered by people. Now, do the ends justify the means when politicians or different environmental groups want to push for the reduction of use or the entire phase out of gas stoves? Well, I'm not trying to put my opinion out there and say whether or not it's worth it. It's up to your personal convictions and the convictions of the people that elect the politicians to make the laws whether to restrict or deregulate things. Now, in a future video, I'm going to be making recommendations on what stoves I personally like. If you are looking for an electric stove, some of the models that I like on the market right now are the Amana ACR2303, which is a coil top stove. It does have those temperature thermostats on it, but otherwise it's not very complex and is a long lasting stove. For glass tops, I like the GEJB655SK, and then if you want an induction cooktop, I'm kind of partial with the GE Profile PH930YPFS. That one costs a lot of money, but according to one of the other appliance YouTubers, Yale Appliances, the GE Profile is one of the most durable induction cooktops on the market. Also, Gen Air makes a few that Yale believes are quite long lasting as well. On the other hand, probably want to avoid Samsung induction ranges if you're going to spend a lot of money. They look nice, but they just don't last very long. In the end, the challenge is going to be whether environmental concerns like childhood asthma, global warming, and other pollutants are more important than a person's freedom to use the gas stove. Which side is going to win out? Well, I believe that eventually environment is going to take precedence. That is my belief, not my opinion on the matter itself. But you find me handing down a gas stove to my kids? I don't know. I lost mine in a boating accident many years ago. Finally, do I prefer a gas stove over an electric stove in my personal opinion? Everything being the same? Well, my answer to that question is...